Hi, welcome to VMware Tutorial for Beginners. In this series, we are learning how to make a home lab with VMware Workstation step-by-step -step for network and system administration practices. In the previous video, we have worked with several important features like snapshot, cloning, sharing folder from host, and VNC connection. Today, we will work with virtual machine settings. We will see how to configure virtual machine in detail. So, let's get started. In the first video, I have showed you how to create and configure a virtual machine, but I didn't describe the settings elaborately. Today, we will dive deeper into the configuration. Let's go to the VM settings. Here we have two tabs, hardware and options. On the hardware tab, we can see the hardwares we added during the virtual machine creation time. And if we need any more hardware, we can add hardware from here. Let's say a hard disk, click next, a SCSI hard drive, create a new virtual disk, store the virtual disk as a single file. Let's say we are creating a 20 gig file. It will be a thin disk. So we have added another 20 gig hard drive with this virtual machine. So if you click OK, if you go to the disk manager, it shows another disk. Click OK. In this way, we can add hardware from here. OK, now let's describe one by one. In memory configuration, on the ladder, you can see we have three marked configuration. First one is guest OS recommended minimum 1 GB for this operating system. We are running a Windows 10 operating system. Microsoft is recommending us a minimum of 1 GB for this virtual machine. But VMware is recommending 2 GB for this virtual machine. And on the maximum recommended memory, we can set 64 gig for this virtual machine. But it says the memory swapping may occur beyond this size, 55.9 gig, because on the preference, let me show you. We have said this is the limit for all the virtual machine and rest of the memories are for the host OS. That's why it was showing that after 55.9 gig, the memory swapping may occur beyond this size. The virtual machine will use up to one gig of memory for graphics memory. We can set this memory limit from the display maximum amount of guest memory that can be used for the graphics memory we can set from here you can see that we have number of processor we have a single socket on the host system and number of core per processor we have assigned four core but if we assign 16 core then powering on the virtual machine will fail because it is configured to use more virtual processor core than the host supports so we can up to assign 12 core because I have 12 core on the system and we can assign less than the maximum amount. So four core is okay, but if we assign more than we have, then it will complain about the virtual core assigning and the virtual machine may not start properly. On the virtualization engine, we have virtualize Intel VTX, EPT or AMD RBI. Normally we must have Intel VT or AMD V support on the CPU and must be enabled on the BIOS to run virtualization on the host system. But enabling this feature on the virtual machine is not mandatory. It is only necessary if you want to run 64-bit nested virtual machine. When we install a VMware ESXi on the VM, let me show you. As you can see that I have installed ESXi operating system in the virtual machine and I can access, here you can see that 192.16.100.50 and I have accessed the virtual machine 192.16.100.50. Now I can create virtual machine inside this virtualized ESXi. And this virtual machine on the ESXi virtual machine will be nested guest. And if we want to install 64-bit Windows guest operating system inside this ESXi, in that case, on the processor, we have to enable virtualize Intel VT and AMD RBI. Without this, we cannot run 64-bit Windows guest inside a virtualized ESXi. We can only run 32-bit operating system. So this option virtualize Intel VT is not mandatory. If you only want to run 64-bit nested operating system inside a virtual machine, then we need to check this on. On the second settings, virtualize CPU performance counters. Normally this option is also not required for the virtual machine. 
if you want to run performance monitoring application inside the guest operating system to identify processor performance problem, then we can enable this option. It could help software developers who optimize or debug software in the virtual machine. Virtualize IO MMU or IO memory management unit. Microsoft has a technology called VBS or virtualization based security, which provides increased protection for the virtual machines by isolating memory space for the virtual machines. We can enable VBS on the supported Windows guest only. VBS reinforces the security of Microsoft Hyper-V. Virtualizing IO MMU is required to enable virtualization based security or VBS. So if you want to enable VBS, we need to enable IO MMU. Let's go to hard disk option. This is the disk file. So we have a single file. We have allocated 200 gig for the file. So it will grow up to 200 gig, but it is a thin disk. You can see that disk information, disk space is not pre-allocated for the hard disk. Hard disk contents are stored in a single file. And its capacity, it shows that current size is 8.6 gig, system free 93.1 gig, and maximum size, it can grow up to 200 gig. On the disk utility, I have shown you on the previous video that how to map these virtual disks on the system directly. And defragment files and consolidate free space. If we click the defragment, then it will defragment the virtual disk. Defragmenting disks rearranges files and programs and unused space on the virtual disk so that programs run faster and files open more quickly. Defragmenting does not reclaim unused space on a virtual disk. To reclaim unused space, we need to compact the virtual disk. Disk defragmentation successfully completed. And if we compact the disk, we can click and compact. Expand the disk capacity. We can expand the disk capacity. We have 200 gig. Let's make it 220 gig. And it says expand increases only the size of the virtual disk. Sizes of the partition and file system are not affected. The disk was successfully expanded. You must repartition the disk and expand the file system from within the guest operating system. It's okay. Now let's power on the virtual machine. Now you can see that we have 20 gig unallocated. It shows. Previously, it was 200 gig. Now I can create another new simple volume from this 20 gig partition. Now let's go to the settings again. Now if you click the advanced button, this is the first hard disk. That's why it is showing SCSI 0 by 0. And we have the option to make this hard drive as independent. Virtual drive has two modes, dependent and independent. Default is dependent. When you add a drive with the VM, it's added with dependent mode. Dependent disks are included in the snapshot. When we revert back to the previous snapshot, all data on the drive will also revert back. Independent drive has two modes, persistent mode and non-persistent mode. Persistent mode independent drive works like dependent drive, but the data returned to the disk are not revert back with the snapshot. It always remains there. Persistent mode is good for keeping any log data. So you can have data consistent even after reverting snapshot back in time. Independent non-persistent mode. This is a read-only disk. When a new file is created, data is written to a read file. And in the event of virtual machine power off or snapshot is deleted, all data is discarded. So we can make the hard disk as dependent or independent persistent or non-persistent. Let's go to the next option, CD DVD. We have added the CD DVD as SATA drive. We can use the physical drive or we can map to the physical drive here or auto detect or we can use the ISO image. Normally on the virtual machine, most of the time we use the ISO image option. On the network adapter, I will describe on the next video detail about the network settings and the network configuration. So I am leaving it right now. On the display setting, I have shown you already. We have option the accelerate 3D graphics use most settings for monitors or we can specify number of monitor here maximum resolution of any monitor and we can assign graphics memory here so if we need any display settings change we can change from here on this virtual machine we have added an usb controller so usb controller is present and we can set the usb compatibility mode 
and share Bluetooth device with the virtual machine. Okay. Now let's plug in a pen drive with the system. It shows us the option. Choose where you would like to connect transient mass storage device. Connect to the host or connect to virtual machine. Let's add it to virtual machine. Okay. You can see this is my pen drive access from the virtual machine. And if you want to safely eject, we can eject from here. So it is safe to remove the hardware now. Okay, so these are the hardware and devices we have described so far. If we need any more devices, we can add from the add hardware wizard. Now let's go to the option tab. On the general, we can see that virtual machine name. We can change the virtual machine name from here and guest operating system. This is the guest operating system and this is the working directory. Enhanced keyboard, we don't need to set this one. Power. Enter full screen mode after powering on, close after. We can change settings from here. Normally, we do not need to change anything here. Shared folder, I have shown you already how to work with the shared folder. On the snapshot, we can decide when powering off, just power off or take a new snapshot or revert, revert to a snapshot or ask me. So if you click take a new snapshot, click OK. And if we power off, Okay, so it should take a snapshot. Let's go to the snapshots. Here on the snapshot manager, we have a snapshot. Description, automatic snapshot created when powering off. Now on the auto protect, if you enable auto protect, then the auto protect feature will periodically take snapshot and you can set the snapshot interval on half hour or hourly or daily. If you set daily and maximum auto protect snapshot will it will take three times daily and auto protect will keep a range of snapshot to provide different restore options snapshots taken every one day every week and every month so auto protect will consume a minimum of 12 gig of space if we set like this and if we set hourly then it should change also half hourly it will change its parameters based on the option we choose So this is a good option during development time. We are not enabling right now. Guest isolation. On the guest isolation, enable drag and drop and enable copy and paste. We can, uh, during the run time, we can copy and paste from host to guest or guest to guest. So if we disable this option, then we will not be able to copy and paste from host to guest and guest to host. So we better leave this on access control not encrypted if you want to encrypt the virtual machine normally we do not encrypt it VMware tools time sync off this is very important feature synchronize guest time with the host so virtual machine will synchronize its time with the host operating system and VMware tools update so it will notify us use application default currently update manually that is okay VNC connection and unity I have shown you on the previous videos appliance view if you want to use this a virtual machine as appliance we can set the version and author here auto login not enabled but we can enable this feature to configure auto login ensure that the guest OS is running and then up to date version of VMR tool so we can configure auto login from here auto login disabled you can enable here if you assign username and password then it will auto login it will not ask the username and password then on the advanced setting, process priorities, input grabbed, default, normal, high, input grabbed and ungrabbed default. These are default settings which are specified on the preference priority setting. If I show you, this is the priority. Input grab and input ungrabbed are normal. This is actually for the VMware workstation process priority option on the host. Normal setting specifies that processes in the virtual machine will get the resources from the host with other process running on the host system. 
so normally we do not change anything here disable memory page trimming we do not need to disable this option because this is good to enable this option workstation uses a memory trimming technique to return unused virtual machine memory to the host machine for use so we better leave it unchecked log virtual machine process periodically if you want to log the virtual machines uh, progress then we can see the log here enable template mode to be used for cloning so if we want to make this virtual machine as a template we can enable this for as a template and we can clone from the from this template gather verbose usb debugging and clean up disk after shutting down the virtual machine this option is good if we check this option here we do not need to manually compact the virtual disk here we have to compact the virtual disk sometimes but if we check this option clear up disk after shutting down on each shutdown the hard disk will be cleaned up enable vbs i have already described to enable vbs we can check the enable vbs option from here in that case all the cpu option will be enabled and if it is very much required then we can enable vbs firmware type changing firmware type changing the firmware might cause the installed guest operating system to become unbootable uh, you can choose the bios or ufi based on the guest operating system so if we choose ufi guest operating system must support ufi otherwise it could be unbootable and these are the file location this is the configuration file is the vmx file and this is the log file so these are the required in detail for virtual machine setting if we need we can customize the virtual machine configuration a lot so this is it for today thank you for being with me and if you still didn't subscribe to my channel please subscribe it will encourage me a lot to create more videos for you so thank you and i'll see you on the next video bye